So I'm Clive Wynn, Professor of Psychology here at ASU and Director of the Canine Science Collaboratory. And this was a study about who are the dogs in shelters really. So when you go to a shelter, the dogs, the cages have cards on them and they say, you know, this is a pit bull cross, this is a cocker spaniel cross or whatever. And we wondered just how true is that? What is the reliability of these claims that are put onto dogs' kennels? And we found that the dogs in shelters are astonishingly genetically varied. So the nearly 1,000 dogs that we tested had DNA signatures from 125 different pure breeds in them. So they are way, way more diverse than people have been assuming. And individual dogs, a lot of shelters, about a quarter of their cage cards suggest that a dog is a purebred dog. But you go in and you do the DNA and it's not 25% purebred dogs, it's just 5%, just one in 20, fewer than one in 20 of the dogs in a shelter are purebred dogs. So that is, for me, one of the big take-home messages of the study. And the second part of the study is that we then compared the DNA signatures to what the shelter staff said a dog was. And if you, if you leave the handful of purebred dogs on one side, that the shelter staff are pretty good. Most people are pretty good at spotting a purebred dog. You put those, that less than 5% of the dogs on one side, and you just look at the rest of them, these mutts, who are genetically extremely complex. Some of them had five different breeds mixed up in them. On average, they had a mixture of three breeds in them. If you look at those mutts and ask how good are the shelter staff at identifying the breeds that go into the mutts, then the answer is they're really bad. They get it right about one time in 20 which is, you know, about as good as anybody's likely to do because there's over 200 different breeds that might be going in. It's a really difficult problem. And genetics is not paint colors. If you take a few drops of Labrador Retriever and a few drops of uh, Border Collie, you do not get a dog that loves to jump into the water and herd fish, right? Genetics is way, way more complicated than that, especially the genetics of behavior. So that actually identifying by just by looking, just by looking at a dog, what kind of a mutt is this? Who, who were this dog's parents and grandparents and so on? It's extremely difficult to do. It's really basically a, a fool's errand to try and identify the breeds in a dog just by looking at it. We know that people are very influenced by what they're told about a dog's breed heritage. And from this study we can say, what you're told about a mutt's breed heritage is unlikely to be true. And we also know that even if it were true, and if you know the dog's true breed heritage, it's unlikely to help you much in deciding whether this dog will fit into your life. Because that's ultimately what counts. We want people to find the dogs that are right for them. We want the joggers to find dogs who like to run. We want the couch potatoes to find dogs who like lying down on the sofa next to you when you're watching TV. That's me, by the way. And so people come to dogs with this feeling that dog breeds are like, are like motor vehicles. And dogs are just not like that. The breed identity, even if you know it, is not very predictive of the animal's personality. And in mixed breed dogs, it's just very unlikely that knowing the background genetics of that dog is going to predict how it's going to be. So what I take from this is that when, you're, when your life is ready to take on canine companionship, Go to the shelter and actually meet and interview and give yourself a chance to really get to know a number of candidates without any preconceptions about what brand of dog you're looking for. Because let yourself be surprised. Obviously you know what energy level you're looking for. You know what size will fit into your existence. But beyond that, you need to interview that dog thoroughly. Just like you get to know new human companions, new human friends thoroughly before you go on vacation with them. So give yourself a chance to really get to know a dog before you bring it into your life. A lot of the better shelters nowadays, and this is a project that we're just starting up looking at this, a lot of the better shelters encourage people to foster dogs. So if the option's there, take a dog home for the weekend, because the way he seems to be in a cage may be quite different from the way he behaves when you get him home and you try and go jogging with him. You know, that may not be his thing after all. And so it would be better to do that that way.